Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. It is the June 2021 edition of Red Wing Ignite Red Talks with Terry Cook. We're super excited to have you. Um, and we're going to start off with just a couple of words from Stacy. Thanks, Shannon. Um, hello, welcome, everyone. Um, I am Stacy Nimmo. I'm executive director at Red Wing Ignite. And Red Wing Ignite is an innovation center. We're located right here in Red Wing, Minnesota. We support entrepreneurs and workforce development, and we also run a co-working space. Um, we're so uh, pleased to bring you this um, Red Talk series where we feature area entrepreneurs, where they tell their stories and uh, talk about innovation in general. So I'm going to throw this back to Shannon, who will introduce our guest for this month. So as Stacy said, um, this is a series that we started actually in February of 2020. We kicked off the first Red Talks as part of the Big Turn Music Festival. And um, we enjoyed the experience and had such positive feedback that we thought we really should do something regularly with this series. And so we took a few months off and gave it some thought and it kicked off in May of 2020 um, with our first presenter uh, panelist, person, which was Adam Gettings, um, the executive director of Red Wing, former executive director of Red Wing Ignite. And we've had the pleasure of visiting with a whole range of local and regional business people. And we have an amazing library on our, both our YouTube channel and our Red Wing Ignite website. So um, make sure you take time and take a listen. They have so much great experience and expertise and value to bring. And, and we're fortunate to have all of them in the community. So today we're very excited to have Terry Cook with us. Uh, Terry is with Norwex and we're gonna roll right into this and let Terry tell us a little bit about how you got to this very moment in time, Terry. How did your professional work career journey start and what led you to this moment? Well, um, it was a fun journey. <laughs> I have a degree in vocational rehabilitation with a minor in special ed. Um, and I've been working in that field for decades. And um, a friend of mine uh, introduced me to these clogs. She, they came through camp from Canada down to, I think, California or Arizona. Some, some snowbird from Canada brought them back to Owatonna. And um, she shared them with me uh, because I was looking for something different to do, maybe something on the side. I was just looking for a little side um, income as my husband and I were remodeling our home and we were paying cash as we went. So I was looking for something on the side and um, this came along and I just never said no. The secret to my success is to say, sure, okay, let's try it. And I, I got nothing to lose by trying it. So over time, you know, I signed on to sell the cloths and it's a home party business typically, or that's how it started, right? So think of um, a Tupperware party with cleaning rags versus plastic bowls. <laughs> so um, my goal was to work my way up to one party a week. And that would add, you know, uh, so much money to, to our family budget. And then pretty soon people ask me, well, I want to do what you do. Can I sign up? Well, until somebody asked me that, I didn't know how to sign them up, but I knew I could. So, you know, start to research that. And then they brought in people and then I brought in more people. And pretty soon I had a, um, a formidable um, team, if you will, of people with lots of different skill sets, doing their own thing, um, making money, saving their homes, um, saving their planet, you know, whatever their mission was. Uh, and now I have 62,000 people working with me on my team. That's a crazy number. That, that's a long way from zero. That's a long yeah. way from zero. Tell me about the decision to leave your previous career and do this full time and what went into that. And was that a hard decision for you? And how long was it from the time you first said yes to the time you left that, that previous career? Well, truthfully, by the, by the time I was introduced to Norwex, I was already leaving my career in vocational rehab. I had run um, 
um, work programs for people with disabilities, residential programs like directing group homes, things like that. And I also worked for um, Special Olympics where I managed a 12 county area of, of Special Olympics events and coached on a national, on our national softball team. Had done a lot of things, but um, I had been leaving started, I had left the field pretty much other than maybe some volunteer work. And I was working here in Red Wing, but then I had moved to Red Wing and was work. Um, I actually was selling eyewear for Stu's Optical and um, working in uh, Hallstrom's florist and greenhouses. I was, I was in the florist shop and the greenhouse. I've I've always said I can get by doing whatever I want to do. There's always something out there and I can do anything that that appeals to me. So I was working with those things at those places and this came along and um, let's see, I, I hosted a couple of events myself and in my home, a couple of parties just to get my hands on it. I really at the time hadn't planned on selling it or joining the company. Well, then I wanted so much of it. I mean, picture it this way. I'm at my home inviting my friends over to clean my home. It's a great business model. Smart. Super smart. <laughs> in the, the first party, um, my guests washed two cars, a whole bunch of exterior and interior windows, mopped my kitchen floor and cleaned my oven. So. I'm okay, I'll do this. All right, yes. <laughs> um, I know it sounds crazy, but it was so much fun. So much fun. So that um, uh, that was like in the fall. And then finally in just a couple months later in January of 2006, I signed an agreement with the company, an application and agreement and decided to go forward. So I had only been introduced to them a couple of months. Mm -hmm. and decided I'd like to play around with it. Yeah. Um, from there, um, eight months later, I quit all of my other jobs just to do Norlex. Yeah. Most people have a team of, of, of uh, uh, consultants with them already when they quit their job. So they've got that stream of, of override income and I didn't have that. I had one person working with me, but I knew I couldn't sit at the at the desk at the eyewear shop working Norwex on somebody else's dime, right? I couldn't do that. Yeah. So I just decided, okay, I'm going to quit my job. And I went to to um, the owner of Struce Optical. I went to Dan and I said, Dan, you know, I really like working here, but I'm going to do Norwex full time. He's like, oh, Terry, that's so great. You'll do wonderful at it. I'm like, but hear me, I'm going to do that full-time. I'm not going to have two full-time jobs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so in eight months time, I knew that that's what I was going to, to allow myself to follow. So you have had a path. I don't know um, very much about how the Norwex structure works, but tell us a little bit about, I mean, when you say you have 62,000 people, tell us a little bit about what that looks like in your Norwex kind of chain of command um okay in order to get any kind of volume of people you need other leaders to work with you so what i ended up doing um i was fortunate enough to uh, come across some great strong independent people who wanted to do what i was doing and our training program back then remember this is like 2006 and 2007 um the training program, the company hadn't started the training programs yet. They were very new. So we kind of developed our own thing and I mentored my people around my dining room table. Wow. And then we'd get really big and I would rent um, uh, a meeting space at the St. James Hotel. And then those people would go off on their own and start building their own groups. And then I'd start over at my dining room table with a new group. And then we'd get large enough to go to need a meeting space outside of my home. We would do that. Those people would be confident enough to go forth on their own. They'd go and then I'd start again. Wow. So I enjoy a vast uh, team of senior leaders. 
What makes Norwex different than a lot of the other companies out there that are have similar structure? Like why, what works so well with the Norwex company? Well, I think first of all, it's our innovative products because it's, you know, we started out basically with microfiber cleaning rags. Okay, they're not rags, but you know, that's what, what we knew then. Um, and we still have, um, the most cutting edge cleaning products. These are the two products that started the company. And we still, they're still our best seller today. There are flagship products. You just with water, you wash your window or your countertop with this and you dry it with this one, wash and dry with just water. And they pick up 99% of the bacteria. The bacteria dies on the cloth because of a micro <clears throat> excuse me, a micro silver we have inside it. Um, and I'm starting to understand science. My high school so science teacher would be so impressed because, you know, kind of gave up on me um, as I well. He yeah, right. Um, but when you can bring it home and make it um, usable, then there you go. I mean, that's cutting edge. Mm -hmm. I've had the privilege of demonstrating these to people who work for 3M and people who work in the microfiber industry and in the cleaning industry. And they've been very impressed with what they saw and what we have. Uh, we keep innovating and making them even better and better and better. So I think that's what sets us apart in the in the market, but also our, our um, philosophy and our mission is to improve quality of life by radically reducing use of chemicals. Um, and we do that in so many different ways. So not only are we avoiding the, the, I shouldn't say the brand names, but all the cleansers that you would buy in the cleaning aisle at the grocery store or at the box stores, we, won't, we don't need those anymore. But so not only is that um, taking care of keeping our air clean, but it's keeping our bodies clean because we're no longer putting our hands in that caustic mess. We're no longer breathing it in. And you know, whatever, whatever your whatever touches your skin goes into your bloodstream you know it's absorbed through so this is our way of helping improve the human condition yeah yeah not to mention the pollution in the oceans and the rivers and the waterways and in the landfills mm -hmm. so we're it really is i'm very proud to be a part of that yeah it's really significant when you explain it that way that you know like you say you start off with these two cloths and the the impact has multiplied and multiplied and multiplied and what a difference it makes. So uh, testimonial, insert testimonial here. Uh, no one asked me to do this, but when you hold up those two cloths. So at Ignite, a number of years ago, we were fortunate enough to purchase some new conference room tables. And they, for any of you that have been in our building for meetings or events, they are a beautiful solid shade of red. Um, I was very excited about those red tables. And so we got them and then we started to use them and no matter what I did, I could not get those tables clean. And I bought a lot of products um, from our local stores, uh, a whole range of them, natural products, not natural, things you would try, things that seemed weird. I'm like, I tried it all. And finally, I don't know who it was that said, I, I don't know, I think you were actually in the building, Terry, for something. And um, it came up like, you should just really try one of these cloths on it. All you need is water. and. By golly, she was right, everyone. <laughs> so I keep my own very special cloth on the back of my office door and our cleaning team has a set and then we have a couple extra sets to be used, but it is crazy because that is all that it takes is your wonderful rag with the water and then I come by and dry it with the lavender cloth. So that was my um, not asked for testimonial. Um, and so Thank you. <laughs> talk to you about um, COVID and Norwex specifically, you certainly must have had, I don't know, I would think an interest, an, an increase in interest or questioning when the whole world is like, we have to get rid of these germs and people are trying to get their hands on products and, you know, cleaners and bleach and wipes. So tell me about that. Did you find an increase or an interest? Did your company do anything different with the pandemic? Well, First of all, we were allowed to stay open because we were deemed essential. So we had the warehouses um, and the call center all taking care of all of that, the consultant care, the customer care, everything was going on. 
And but the mask use, the necessity for masks hit us really quickly. Remember that? It's like all of a sudden, no, we need to be wearing masks. Well, um, some medical companies approached Norwex and asked us, since they knew that we had the micro silver inside, might we be willing to test our microfiber, the different microfibers we have to see of their um, efficacy, to see how, how well they might filter out the, the, the microns into what, what size, to see if that would even be something that we could contribute. And it turned out that this handy drying cloth had such an amazing ability to filter tiny little microns, um, like 0.1 microns, 90% of 0.1 microns, that's wild. And then after they're washed, they filter even more because there's a little bit of tightening up of the fabric. So, okay, let's enter in. And <laughs> at the very first time that, that we could order them, because it took a while to go from development to um, production, to shipping, to availability, to get them out, we were limited to eight or no, 12 cloths, 12 cloth masks each. It's the most I could order. I had people contact me. I had, I needed like hundreds, but I could get 12. Yep. And then when they came around again, we could get 12 again. And then as, then it loosened up as we were able to mass produce and ship. Even the shipping at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, because people were looking for PPE, right? Mm -hmm. um, so things would be loaded onto a plane, they'd be bumped for someone else's mm -hmm. medical necessities. Um, and that didn't happen just us, that happened, that was, that was a global event happening. So some of the things were out of our control, but anything that we would control, we've got a, an amazing global leader that just, um, she's got business and she's got um, finance background and she's got people skills. And, you know, we just um, kind of rolled with it the best we could. When all was said and done, in addition to all the masks, uh, people wanted to clean. Mm -hmm. So people were buying the products mm -hmm. and people needed jobs. The crazy thing is, you know, the hospitality industry shut down. Lots of people had to stop work when they wanted to work. So people joined our company. There's no financial risk to join. So, you know, hey, Terry, I'd love to do what you do. Can I, is that possible? Yeah, sure. You know, it, it, and we could make the training by, by this time, the company had grown to having wonderful training opportunities um, um, at your fingertips, right? everything is virtual made it really easy. So we were able to meet that market as well. That's really interesting. So the demand for masks and the ingenuity of your company to pivot and create those masks, mm -hmm. the demand for cleaning because everything needed to be cleaned, and then the ability for people to go to work um, mm -hmm. that didn't have another path for employment at the time. So uh, in, sure. in a lot of ways, very positive impact. For it was a positive, perfect storm. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. It's nice to hear some some good things. And there are a lot of good things that came out of very difficult times. Mm -hmm. There are. So while we're on the on the topic of Norwex and the products, tell us what your favorite product is that you're selling in your line right now. Oh, well, it's always been the mop. Okay. We have a wonderful floor care system that again, you only use water. Um, we have a dry mop first, you can dust mop, and then you switch it to a wet mop and you just use the water mm -hmm. telescoping handle. I, um, um, the gentleman that in installed my hardwood floors in my home had independent contractor, right? He owned his own install hardwood floor business. He made sure that every one of his installs got a, one of our mops wow. with their install, just because once you use it, there's nothing else that compares. Another very good testimonial. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, so obviously during the pandemic, you were selling things virtually online, you know, people reaching out to you, but do you, um, will there be a return to in-person events, home parties, that kind of thing? Do you have that on the horizon for your company? 
Oh, sure, sure. Some people are already back in person with parties and um, workshops and uh, different things. We continue to, our corporate headquarters continues to innovate in the way that we can present um, by upping the IT so that we can do different things. Um, and the vendor events are starting to come back. Okay. My first vendor event will be in uh, mid-August at uh, the Steel County Fair in Owatonna. I always have a booth there. I've done that for, I think this will be my 13th year. Uh, yeah, so it's six days of really hot weather. <laughs> I would imagine, I would imagine. We have someone um, that commented about how awesome it is on stainless steel. So for all of those folks that listen to this session, and there's a lot of you out there that are uh, using stainless steel in your homes and your kitchens especially, know that apparently Norwex is awesome. Something in particular, Terry, that you recommend for folks on their stainless steel? Yes, we have what's called a stainless steel cloth. <laughs> That's a great name. That's a really great name. Well, it's similar to the to this window cloth that you were drying your, your tables with, um, but it's a little bit softer uh, because stainless steel has um, um, stainless steel has different grades, just like sheets have different thread counts. So some grades of stainless steel, your fingerprints can get on there and get really deep in and it's hard to get them out. The stainless steel cloth tends to uh, be able to buff it out a little nicer. Mm -hmm. nice. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you um, to our attendee for mentioning that. So switching gears a little bit, um, I know you've been very active in the Red Wing business community and, and with organizations and philanthropically. Tell us why, why you like being a part of Red Wing you know, we can live anywhere and work anywhere. What is it about Red Wing and the business community and the general community that you enjoy so? Well, generally I'm here because my husband's here. So <laughs> it kind of helps to be in the same city. Yes. Um, he's born and raised here and I came here by accident. I um, answered a job to, to be the director of a group home program. Um, and I answered the ad in the St. Paul Pioneer Press. I was living in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, which is a city of about 65,000 people. And I wanted something larger. So I'm answering an ad in the St. Paul paper and it's in this tiny town of Red Wing. <laughs> but just coming over the bridge from Wisconsin, I knew this is where I was going to be. Hmm. Um, I wasn't, this was several years before I found Norwex, but um, just something attracted me to the community, um, the river town, the antique dealers, um, just just felt folksy and homey. Mm -hmm. um, and then we chose, you know, I met Jerry, he's from here. Um, so we made our life here. As far as, um, so then as an outsider, I had to, you know, figure out ways to fit in and blend in. And when you're, um, so I was in my 30s when I moved here and being 30 and single in a small town, is you know provided some challenges itself but i've never been one to sit on in the the back of the room i'll lead my team from the back of the room but i've never been one to um shy away from going places to meet people or doing things to meet people um the business community here welcomed me with open arms i stepped into um for a while i was active with the chamber i'm no longer with them but I was active with them and enjoyed every single minute. Um, I had a chance to meet people and help them put their businesses forward. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's never just about me or just about Norwex. It's about all of us. So um, to, to be a part of the fun and innovative ways to network with businesses um, was just, you know, more than I had expected. I also was a member of a networking group in town, and I still, those are my go-to people. Um, uh, my realtor came from being in that organization, my banker, my financial planner, um, my insurance agent, just, you know, a whole host of, of um, people that I don't know that I would have met otherwise. I think that's a great um, it's great advice and you were a great example that you can't meet people unless you get out there and really engage with the business community and 
um, you know, having seen you very involved with the chamber all those years, you have opportunities. Anyone that's involved with groups like that has an opportunity to tell their story and whether they're selling a widget or a product or a service, whether they're new or they've been here their whole life. It's just such a great and important way, I think, for a business to be connected to others. And again, the example you just gave about those really significant connections that will continue to serve you for many, many years as a person, as a business owner, um, happened because of that, by getting out there and joining a group and meeting people and sharing your story. So I know you um, are a great example of that. Thank you. Um, how about advice? So someone says to you, you know, obviously there's probably one thing you would say if someone wants to sell Nor Norwex, but if someone just says, man, I've always wanted to just leave what I do and try something new, or I have this business idea, I'm just not sure what to do. What, what's a piece of advice um, that you would give someone that's interested in an entrepreneurial journey? Well, I'm so glad we could talk about this. Um, this is what sparks me now. I've got the Norwex thing down, but um, you know, whenever, wherever you're at, you, whatever business you're in, um, if you're working for someone else, they've got a um, a plan, a subscription, a a um, a formula that they want you to follow, um, and direct sales is no different. But when it comes to when you're doing that, if you find that you're not fully engaged, if your heart's not in it and your head's not in it, then I recommend you take a step back, take a deep breath and go, oh, what do I want to do? Or you, if you hear yourself saying, oh, I wish I could do this. I wish I could do that. Then that's what you should do. Um, when I was in college, or actually one of the times that I had dropped out of college, I did that a lot. Um, I worked for a, in a clean packaging factory uh, for Miles Kimball Catalog Company. Mm -hmm. I don't know if yeah. you remember that, but um, Miles Kimball was from Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and that's where I was going to school the, in my first leg of college. Um, in the autumn, they start bringing on seasonal help, and so you work from like four till ten at night, and I would, you know, I like the work, and I would be doing it, and pretty soon it got to be kind of mind numbing being in one place. Well, they weren't interested in moving me around because I had this master. So I would screw up just so they would move me to something else. And then I would do that great for a while. And then I would screw up and they'd move me around. Pretty soon they let me come in. It's a true story. They let me come in and work where I wanted to work because that's how they could get the best, the best product from me, right? Mm -hmm. Because I was finding something that I was good at happy doing so i would you know vector myself around the, the plant um and then i also have i don't know if you see these two books behind me train your brain uh, it was written by a friend of mine her name is dana wild this is both of these books are best selling uh best selling books and they're both both authors are close friends of mine um train your brain talks about the science of your brain and when you tell it something it'll believe it so it's how you can make, um, make a bad situation better, make your life happier. You know, if you say, well, you know, nobody gets rich when they complain about being poor. When they complain about having no money, you're not going to get rich. If you want to get rich and you have no money, you have to stop complaining about having no money. You have to focus on, I've got money coming in. There's money coming in. I have an opportunity to make money. Positive things. So you've got that rant, that belief going. Pretty soon your brain believes it because that's that's what it teaches you, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other one, the Hugh Jackman and the Joy Revolution, it's written by a friend of mine who's also a Norwex leader. She studied Hugh Jackman. I mean, rough job, right? Yeah. She did this mm -hmm. on her own. But Hugh Jackman um, is the model of be happy, appreciate your life. Yeah, he's got a good life, but you know, he had to work for it. He came from nothing. He came from a very poor family. He had to work his way up. Um, and he appreciates that every day. And he's a, um, so anyway, his examples lit my friend up. And so she put it, 
she put it together in a book so that people could see this is how you do it. I assume Hugh Jackman has read her book. I don't know. Well, you would. Sure I haven't asked that. him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure um, his sister and his wife have. Nice, nice. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, those were really good suggestions for people. And so I appreciate you sharing that. Um, either a current challenge or a past challenge in your work life and how you overcome it or ideas that you have for someone else that's just facing a challenge. Maybe it's in self-employment or entrepreneurship, but anything you want to share with us about that? Well, <clears throat> I don't allow myself to focus on challenges. So you know, I just, if I feel that something isn't fulfilling me anymore, I'm not afraid to change. I've moved 47 times from the time I left home when I was 18 wow. to the time I got married, 47. That's a lot. Yeah, but it kept me lean. It kept me, I didn't have a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. it, I had what was important to me and I brought that with, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, now being married and being in the same house for uh, 25 years, it's like, oh, yeah, now what to do? But um, the, the biggest thing I think is that when people feel stuck or stagnant, there's so many things that can unstick you, so many things. The very first thing is you have to get yourself in a positive mindset. And that doesn't mean just saying, okay, you know, I, I'm happy, I'm happy, you know, sitting around the room singing kumbaya or something. But there's ways that you can pull yourself out of a funk, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, it's um, like a 60 second dance party. <laughs> I crank up some great music and just kind of dance around the house. Um, music does it for me, lots of music. Um, um, maybe a positive, somebody might care for a positive um, um, podcast, or maybe they need a nap, or, you know, there's something to be said for, for those things, some self-care. Yeah. Self but, but even, and that still even sounds very simple and simplistic, but there's so much science that backs up the fact that you've got to feel good. And then the actions that you have to take that you have to take, whether it's in your job or at home or whatever, they flow much more effortlessly. Mm -hmm. um, they, uh, That's good. But now I'm intrigued with what you're playing at your dance party. What's well, your Well, um, there's a lot of Jimmy Buffett music. Uh, <laughs> you a parrot head? Um, pardon? Are you a parrot head? Are we gonna? I am a parrot head. Uh, is a parrot head. There a we parrot. go. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. There's Steely Dan. There's you know. I, I was in college in. Well, I started college in the mid '70s, so um, lots of good um, dance music. Uh, yeah. Lots. Sure. How about some goals? Whether um in your Norwex life and your community life, um, but goals you have for your business in the next year, one year, mm -hmm. three years, five years, like how you plan and what you're looking forward to? Well, the funniest thing is that I don't plan. Never did. Never did. I try and I fail miserably at it. And I don't like to fail, so I just stop planning, right? I can set goals, but um, the five-year plan and those kinds of things have never been my strong suit. Um, so this year, I mean, considering my long term goal with Norwex was to work my way up to one party a week. Yeah, <laughs> I so, think you surpassed that. Yeah, yeah. So um, my fun part of my of my life now is to work with my team members. So you had asked me earlier, what does that look like? Well, 62,000 people, but I've got so many different leaders, I actually work with about 100 and 60 people that's you know they get my attention they're my my closest circle my senior leaders um that are at my level 
they're golden. They got, they've got this. But, you know, I keep bringing in new ones or people that don't want to be leaders. I focus my attention and my energies on them so that they can feel positive and successful until they want to go off on their own or, or you know, they get to determine what success is for them. Yeah. So my goal this year is to maintain my, my leader title and my, um, my level with the company, but maintain my sales while I work toward helping others with their, um, um, I want to coach them into, uh, uh, with helping them become their success. Um, I, I just set up a Facebook page called um, um, Beach, Beach House Brain. So um, there's nothing there yet, but I grabbed the, the Earl and um, put a picture on it. So okay. uh, because that's to me, my way of life comes from this, this idea of sitting at our beach house, warm breezes. Um, oh my gosh, I'm feeling a Jimmy Buffett song coming on. But, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's not so much the physical beach house, although that's fabulous. Um, it's the, the peace of mind. It's a state of mind that it brings me. And I want to help others um, by having that. It, it's helped me succeed. So I want to help others do that same thing. That's awesome. You've kind of, I think, answered really my next two questions. And one was what inspires you and how do you spend your free time? So anything you would add on to what you just shared about your state of mind and your beach house and your Jimmy Buffett music. But what I like inspires to you? You know, what as a person oh. really, really motivates and inspires you? Oh, it's other people's happiness and success. If I see someone else living their best life, I can't help but feel happy around them. It doesn't have to be that I got it there. They got there themselves. Mm -hmm. But to see that somebody had, you know, reach their pinnacle or the next step or whatever, especially now after the pandemic. This is a very hard year for everyone. And to see to see whether they're strangers or friends come out of it in a good in a good light and appreciate how they um, uh, work through it. Um, I to me that that says it all. Well and what a fortunate position that you are in, have created for yourself, have worked hard to get to, but that you're able to do that every day in your work, inspire and coach and lead and encourage and shape um, the next leaders and see them live their best life. So that must bring you a tremendous amount of, of joy and fulfillment. Oh, yeah, right? Um, who would want more than that? Yeah, and think who, of the I, I can't imagine having anything more than that. The numbers of people um, that you've been able to help in all these years being involved. Mm -hmm. And so the free time, I'm thinking there's some music, there's some beach house, but is there anything else about how you spend your free time? I love to knit. You love to knit. You heard it here first, everyone. <laughs> um, I used to say that I was practicing for old age when I get out my knitting needles. <laughs> now I guess I can't say that. So. No. Yes. I guess I've got it down. Uh-huh. Yeah. And what yeah. are you knitting? What is your specialty? Well, I don't really have a specialty. I knit whatever. I don't even knit for myself. I knit to give the things away. Okay. Um, this winter, I knitted a bunch of animal head hats uh, to give to my um, <clears throat> my niece's children. You know? But, yeah. Very right. fun. I, and you know, is, you do this year round? I haven't been knitting now because it's nice and hot and sitting with a ball of wool on my lap um, <laughs> really doesn't bring me joy, but, um, but it will, um, it, it will. I enjoy, um, I enjoy it. I like the, the ability to create something. I follow patterns, but the ability to, to do that. Um, That's very yeah. fun. Very mm -hmm. fun. Um, I'm, I'm going to guess that I know the answer to this because of, uh, really the positivity that you've brought to our conversation and how you deal with a lot of things. But is there anything that keeps you up at night related to really 
self-employment and entrepreneurship? Is there something that you just wake up thinking, oh, stop thinking about it? Um, <clears throat> no. <laughs> well, that's a pretty amazing gift right there. I go to bed at night. I keep a journal. I keep a gratitude, gratitude journal. Um, at night, I write in there on one side of the page all the good things that came to me that day. And then on the next side, the final side is what good things are going to happen tomorrow? What am I looking forward to? Mm -hmm. And then I put it away and I go to sleep. When I wake up, so my brain is thinking about all those good things all night long. Right. So when I wake up in the morning, my brain is already positive. Yeah. It can't not be positive. That's mm -hmm. the science of, that's, that's brain science at its best. Yeah. yeah, I think the gratitude journal is such a good lesson. Um, you know, there's a lot of leaders and people out in the world that talk about doing a gratitude journal. And, you know, if you force yourself, and I think it's a great lesson too, for people that are struggling with, you know, starting a business or they're in a difficult place in their work life, or, you know, they have some trepidation about what to do next. There's always something to put in that book. Um, but I, I love your um, addition to that, which I've never heard of, and that would be the things that you're looking forward to the next day. Mm -hmm. And so not only are you being grateful, but you're you're looking forward and that's filling your your head with more positivity. So that's a really that's a really great idea. And for people wondering if they've got what it takes to own their own business or to run their own whatever they want to do, I would say, yes, you do. Hands down. It doesn't have to be Norwex. It could be, you've interviewed some great entrepreneurs and they just took that first step, right? It's like, okay. And it's okay to make a list. I like to make lists. The problem with me making lists is that I lose the lists. <laughs> I'm a very random thinker. So I started carrying around a notebook so I can write things in it because I'll forget. And then sometimes I forget to check the book or which page, you know, but, um, there's, there's goodness and there's um, skill to be had just in writing, in writing it down. When you put pen to paper, you've solidified something. You've, you've given your brain that much more to focus on. And, you know, there's, there's people out there that will help anyone, anyone in whatever venture they want to go in. Yeah. There's all sorts of resources for people to be mentored or just to knock some ideas around. That's what I do a lot with my coaching with my team. I don't ever give them advice. I ask them questions mm -hmm. and they come up with the answers because that's how I, you know, I was, I had a coach um, growing up in Norwex, someone outside of Norwex because I kept my, my vision broader, right? Um, I can always get the Norwex people, but you know, to, to get another perspective is really important. And as long as that person didn't tell me what to do, I knew I was getting value. Yeah. yeah. I think that's so important, that circle that you talk about, and we talked about it earlier, but you just have to be willing to share your idea or your dilemma or, you know, what you're, you're pondering, what you're thinking about, and trust that there are people out there that want to go along on that journey. No one of them will have all the answers, but... I think it's a really good lesson um, that you just shared about, you know, that circle of people can make all the difference. And there are a lot of people that really want to see lots of people succeed and they all have something, you know, to give, whether it's a little or a lot. So, but until the entrepreneur or the person on the journey is willing to step out and share and be real and um, expose themselves in a way that, you know, it may, someone may say that's not a great idea or, I have some questions about what you're thinking. I think people are so afraid that people aren't going to like, you know, what they're thinking about or that they're going to take some version of it and go do something with it. You just can't go into it with that mindset. You have to be open and willing um, to listen to feedback and to grow that, that really circle of support that you've talked about several times today in our conversation. Well, and I'm a three-time college dropout. I eventually did get my college degree, but it took me 10 and a half years. So at my 10 year high school class reunion, I'm coming back saying, I'm almost done with, with my, with college. <gasps> really? Masters or doctorate? Because there was a bunch of them there. 
I call my bachelor's. <laughs> it's a BS. <laughs> hey, yeah, in, uh, sometimes in more ways than one. And I, you know, I think the lessons for, especially today, and a lot of the work that Red Wing and Knight is doing, is that that path isn't for everyone. And even if it's a 10 year path, it's your path. And if one of the things that I think we know about adulthood in general, but for sure entrepreneurship is it is not a direct line. It is, there's not a straight line between where you start and where you finish. And that line, and as squiggly as it gets, and as messy as it gets, and sometimes it's forward and sometimes it's back, but it's the richness of that process and that journey that's going to get you where you want to go. Probably not in the way that you would think you'll get there, mm -hmm. but um, you will arrive um, at the place that I think mostly people are supposed to be. It's just not a straight line. Right. But that's the beauty of it. The mm -hmm. beauty is in the journey. Yeah. You know, I set out to be a special ed teacher. I never got my teaching certificate. I, you know, so I did anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the journey introduced me to so many people through you know interesting people um i had a great varied work um record um i've done a lot of things lots of things and norwex was supposed to be a side gig yeah and then it turned out that it wasn't the side gig mm -hmm. so now my coaching and my beach house brain is the side gig who knows what that'll be but, you know, I was not afraid to change my mind. I did something like, oh, okay, well, my, I don't know if I want that. So I changed here. I didn't lose anything by dropping out of college. I did not lose a bit. Um, there was so much to experience that there's a lot of, a lot of value to living your life yeah. and letting it come to you. And all of those experiences that you were having at the moment that you were having them all got you ready for this moment today. I think that's what's yeah. so important. I think that's a, hard, a much harder lesson for a young person to understand and get their head around that it's all getting you ready. It, it may not look mm -hmm. as clear as you want it to, but it's all building on where you're going mm -hmm. to end up. And chances are 30 years from now, this is not where you thought you would be, but the path <laughs> getting there really is, it's really the beauty of it all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, coming back around to Norwex, uh, tell us how you get, how do you get the word out? Obviously people are very aware of social media, but what are some different ways that you help, you know, spread the word about your own business and Norwex in general? Someone wants to buy something like how, what, what methods are you using? Me personally? You personally. I'm not on social media very much. Okay. Um, Oh, that's just really, I tried and tried and tried it. And it's just really not where, where I'm comfortable. I need the the one-on-one. -on -one. So for me, it was, um, um, I did, you know, through my, um, my networking group that I was a part of and through the chamber. And now, um, as I've left those, I have, I have a following. I, I do, I actually email people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's value in an email marketing campaign. Um, and I'm, I'm not very, I'm not very good at sales. And I know that that sounds kind of weird, but I'm just good at letting people know what I've got. Yeah. You know, I may email you and say, Hey, I've got this going on. You know, maybe you can come out and join me. Um, if I'm doing an event somewhere, I let people know through texting or email um, and maybe social media a little bit that I'm going to be at this um, event in this town or, you know, I'll have my table at River City Days, um, mm -hmm. things like that. But um, so I kind of do the, the collaborative yeah. um, marketing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I've noticed um, in being aware of your business and watching you through the years that you do tend to, you know, you do put yourself out there. You sign up to be at things and, you know, be involved in different things that, Maybe someone would be like, oh, maybe sometimes it costs money or maybe it interferes with something you want to do on your day off or, but I would assume that a lot of those efforts have really paid back into your, into growing your Norwex business by going and putting yourself out there and being involved with things that maybe you wouldn't normally do. Well, and as I was growing my business, I did that. Mm -hmm. I did someone 
had recommended to me early on in my Norwex career that I do something publicly once a month. Like, okay. <laughs> I couldn't see any reason not to. So, you know, there, and that was just, that was back when vendor, vendor events were rare, right? And now they're pretty much saturating the market. Mm -hmm. But but there's ways to do that, right? And you can invite people to your home or, you know, whatever. There's lots of different ways. Um, but I did. I made myself public as often as I could, um, as much as I could tolerate listening to myself, right? But I met, you know, like I said, the, the, the fun events, I turned them into fun because yeah. if I'm going to be there, I was fortunate enough that when the vendor events started popping up, I was comfortable with that because I always like to shop at them. Yeah. So, I mean, I used to do the Minneapolis Home and Garden Show with Norwex. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. That was a big deal. Yeah. Um, really big deal. Yeah. And that's passed on to team members now. So, yeah. So if someone were to contact you um, from this or from anything and just say, oh my gosh, okay, I miss my friends. I love your products. It sounds amazing. I think I'd like to have a home party. What is the answer right now? Are you are you referring that to someone on your team or can are you actually doing a home party with people? I've not done home parties yet. Um, one of the things that I was doing right before COVID hit was um, I took my my business out of my home, even though it's a home-based business, mm -hmm. I carry a lot of product and I'm, you, you know how I'm random at thinking, I'm also random at organizing. So <laughs> I needed to get it out of my house. Yeah, okay. So I have a two room office suite um, nice. where one room is my wonderful office. I'm sitting at my desk and the next room has all my product in it. It's got a big closet for my vendor event um, supplies like my shelves and display pieces and things. And then in the middle of the room is a table with stools. And I've okay. hostesses would invite their guests to come to my office, okay. uh, to, to the, my team room, right? Because that's where I my team meetings. Um, they would bring simple snacks and they would invite their friends. I would provide everything else. They were in and out in like a half hour or 45 minutes. They enjoyed um, being able to look at the products talk about some, have a little social time, then they could go home. They didn't have to um, clean their house. Yeah. I didn't have to pack up things that they might want to see or might not want to see. Yeah. Um, and it was just easy. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to going back to that. Okay. Um, I would do some home shows again, though. Yeah, yeah, good. Um, but that, yeah, because remember how people were cleaning your house for you? I would think that would be a real enticing component for someone to have a party. Don't clean your house before your party, your Norwex party. Wait and let your friends do it. Well, that was 15 years ago and the business model at the home party has changed. Nobody yeah. wants to clean anybody's oven anymore. So <laughs> seemed like a real positive bonus to throw into a party. Yeah. We have um, thoroughly enjoyed uh, this visit with you, Terry, and I appreciate all the sharing and all the openness and um, you know, you're, you just, have so much to give and so much to offer and i'm sure your team feels that and hopefully a lot of people who watch this and listen to this down the road will feel it as well are there any last words or comments that you'd want to share with the with the audience both today's and future audiences just about your journey and being an entrepreneur mm -hmm. or you know a woman-owned business well you know because i had been underemployed at different times in my life and because i have had great career choices. Um, I, I think the, the number one thing that I message that I want to impart on everyone is just to trust yourself and say yes. It, it can't hurt to explore things. Mm -hmm. It just can't. Um, the result may not be what you had hoped for, but that doesn't mean you failed. I don't think there's any failing and striking out on your own yeah. or trying something new. Um, just even dabbling a little bit. There's no fail in it at all. Yeah. Well, it's a great lesson that you leave us with. Say yes. Say yes to all those opportunities that come along and um, you'll be richer, wiser, and often more successful for it. So thank you, Terry, for being here today, for your time, and for all that you've brought to the community. And we look forward to seeing you in person. Um, very, very soon. So thanks everyone for being part of today's Red Talk. We look forward to next month and we appreciate you joining us.
Have a good afternoon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Shannon. Bye, Terry. Bye bye. You can leave. You're all done. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciated having you today. All righty. Thanks.